This is Coda Radio, episode 473 for July 4th, 2022. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Jupiter Broadcasting's weekly talk show, taking a pragmatic look at the art and the business of software development and the world of technology. My name is Chris, and joining us in his flag-themed outfit, it's our host, Mr. Dominic. That's right. Chris, can we hear that eagle soar? We got an eagle. You sure I should let it out, Mike? You sure? Let it out. Let it out. That's yeah. right. I'm putting Beautiful. down the tea, picking up the coffee. Look at the way it goes. Look at that. I can't remember other British things. Hold on. I think it just stole someone's hot dog. Oh. Yes. No. Jeez. Well, we just ruined their Independence Day. So, yeah, it's a holiday here in the States. Uh, yes. Of course, by the time you're hearing it's over. We have that whole time delay. That's kind of the reasons we always just do a show, because by the time you're hearing this, your holiday's over. So here we are for you. I got to say, I have a little bit of, I don't know, slash envy slash Im- impressed. I don't know. You have become like a grill master. I didn't even realize you owned a grill. And then you know how I stalk you on Twitter, as I do. and As one, all everyone. Should. And I'm just seeing all kinds of goodies all the time. I mean, grilled ribs, grilled corn on the cob. Those ribs were not me, but it's funny you mentioned ribs, Chris. Yeah. Are, are you flying down or, or teleporting via Lady Jupe's mycelial network? I mean, if I need to for ribs, I probably could. There are going to be barbecue ribs, a uh-huh. couple hot dogs, because we have some children that uh, have not experienced or embraced the glory that is ribs, which great, more for dad, not a problem, no arguments there, With paired with some Redwood Empire bourbon. Oh. As well as some Mexican corn, again, on the grill. Oh, my. Yes. And French fries, because little kids exist. But yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. That's nice. That's nice. There will be a picture. Don't worry. I don't generally see you get, like, you know, a three or four head day start on the show. But this is a special week. Mm -hmm. You got a jump start. And I think think there's one man that deserves credit for it. There can only be one. And of course, it is the Egon. Egon has written into the show again. He says, hi, guys, this is Egon. As I've told you before, the joy of listening to Mike and Chris chat about the art and business of software development and the world of technology is the weekly highlight of my commute. But episode 471 was special. Birthday drunk, freshly engaged Mike is the best kind of Mike. I love his vibes. Coda Radio is the most informative and entertaining tech podcast I know. But when you started to talk about me and to me, the joy of listening to your show raised like an Apple stock since 2019. Damn. <laughs> now it's time for me to give back to the greatest show on earth, apart from being a Coder QA member for the first hour. But of course, a first hour Coder QA member, that is impressive. Now it is time for me to give back to the greatest show on earth. Apart from being a Coder QA member, I will do. I henceforth apply for one of the following positions on the Coder Radio team. All right, get ready. The official Coder Radio mascot. Or 90% Coder Radio Jesus without the 100% because he doesn't want to get nailed on to things. So he wants to be the 90% Coder Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, or president of the German-speaking Coder Radio chapter in Europe. I'll be waiting for your answers with great anticipation. The Egon. This is a tough call. I think Egon's probably qualified for any of these three positions. For sure. And also, I am concerned about the size of the organization just growing and growing. And so I feel like there may be room to collapse a couple of these positions and just give more work to Egon. I feel like he could just do all three. Although I, I have to say the German aspect of it is very intriguing to me because I, I failed to tweet this, but I do often grill brats and various other types of German sausages. There's that. Yeah. So he should he should probably be aware of that. Yeah. The radio mascot. I think that's that's probably pretty good. The, the Coder Jesus one is tricky. That's tricky. I see. I think he'd be more like a coder John the Baptist, right? He's like spreading the word. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's exact. Yeah. All right. So uh, why don't we go ahead and give approval since we're having our little production meeting now to uh, Egon being the official coder radio mascot and the president of the German speaking coder radio chapter of Europe. And we will revisit uh, his exact status in the actual order of the church of coder radio. But it's definitely high up there. That's for sure, right? Incredible work, Egon. Keep it up. And also, Gary gets a little point in the chat room for managing to mention Snow Leopard less than three <laughs> minutes into the episode. <laughs> We've got them trained so well. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, chat room. 
They, you know what? They know how to make you happy. Wait, can Egon like wear a snow leopard themed outfit with maybe like an Adium watch? We could, we could make this work. I feel like this is going a different direction. Like this is a different thing. So we could talk. That's a different podcast. I think, you know, I want to, I want to just put one more word out there for the London meetup because I won't be there. And I want to make that clear, but Alex from self-hosted is going to be there as well as a bunch of community members. And I feel like this could be the proto meetup. I've been looking to get over in the London area forever. And it'd be great to bring a few members of the crew over there and do a meetup. And so this is sort of like the scouting mission, right? We're sending over the early scouts to go over and discover the territory. So meetup.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting. They've got a venue. They got a date. It's getting solid. And an obligatory plug for the new JB Meetups Matrix space. This is an area where we are organizing um, physical meetups and virtual meetups. We have a London colony meetup chat room, a Pacific Northwest colony, a Mumble colony. I could see the Mumble ones for virtual events. I could see us doing California one because we have a California road trip coming up soon. I could see us doing uh, one in Raleigh, Florida one, you know, Florida man community chat room. Yeah, I'm coming to Florida. Yeah. One day I would like to. I mean, I have been. I have been. The nice thing about doing a meetup in Florida, if you do it near Orlando in particular, or even Tampa works good, is that the whole economy other than Disney, which I don't know if the governor has his way, we're going to just like send some cats in to catch the mouse, is basically geared towards this exact thing, right? It's all like people come in, they do their thing, they leave, we pay no income tax, we tax the out of you while you're here. It's amazing. Really good stuff. I was surprised by Raleigh. Yeah, there is a lot of industry in Raleigh. And that I realized is kind of part of it is if you can do meetups around where there's some big industry buildings where they have offices, you get a lot of listeners that show up. It's kind of funny how that works. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind going to Raleigh this time. Oh, yeah. Be good. I, you know, I was fun. It was funny. I was going to go to Linux Fest Southeast or. Right. Mm -hmm. Southeast, Southeast Linux Fest. Yeah. Thing. That's the one. And uh, apparently it either didn't happen or happened early this year, or I, for some reason, thought it was early. I don't know, man. That that was crazy. I wanted to go. And then I think I saw like my buddy Noah chatting in Telegram or something that it was live right then. I was like, oh, what? Oh, yeah. Well, Emma told me because she's, she's like, are you coming to any events this year? I said, yeah, I'm going to go to self. And she's like, but I'm we're here now. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's too bad. Yeah, this it's you know what the I got to get back. There used to be a good app, and I can't remember what it was to track like all the upcoming events for a given topic. And now I, I guess I don't know if it's gone or. It's funny how some events are they're pretty clever. They reach out to media with an email that says, "Hey, just so you know, this is the details about our event. If you get a chance to mention it on air, that'd be great. But just want you to be aware of what's going on, because they realize, hey, you know, they they probably talk to hundreds of thousands of people. So if we tell them, then they could tell hundreds of thousands of people." But then other events just don't think that way and they don't reach out and they don't try to like get coverage. And I think it hurts their growth a little bit. It's sort of an echo chamber thing, too, I, I suppose. Yeah, well, it, it sucks, too, for local events that don't really maybe know how to do the outreach. And I, I've had it so many times where I realized like, there was literally something in Tampa that would have been cool for me to go, like maybe do an interview for the show or something, you know, some kind of like. Because we have a lot of weird like infosec stuff because we have a big military base here. And just like they don't they don't publish anything and they're surprised when all their events are super duper small. So Linode.com slash coder. Go there to get one hundred dollars and sixty day credit on a new account, and it's just a great way to support the show while you learn something. Linode is fast, reliable cloud hosting. You gotta try it for your next project. Maybe it could be the back end for your business. That's what I do. Or maybe it's just a personal site. You know, maybe you got a portfolio, maybe you got a blog you want to put up there. Maybe you want your own personal peer tube instance. It's actually great for that. And then you can use their object storage backend for the video storage, which is killer. But if you need like a high performance application, well, they've got you covered there too. They got MVME storage, PCIe, beautiful MVME storage. They got their own ISP connections. So they have just screaming 40 gigabit connections coming into these machines. And of course, they've got processors with AMD, Epic CPUs, and 11 data centers around the world. So you're going to find something near you or your customers. Linode's been doing this for nearly 19 years. Crazy Cats got started in 2003 because they just saw where Linux was going. They saw where the technology could take them. I can resonate with that. I think you might too. And I think you'll see it throughout the service. And then if you ever get any trouble, you'll find that they have the best service. 
You know, somehow those hyperscalers can make billions and billions and billions of dollars, but they can't do simple support. Maybe there's something special to it. Maybe it's not so simple. Maybe Linode just has it figured out after nearly 19 years. Either way, go try it for yourself and find out. Support the show and get $100. Go try out my host. I wouldn't host our applications anywhere else, and I think you'll feel the same way. Linode.com slash coder. All right, Mr. Dominic, let's talk about your Linux 2022 toolbox. Actually, let's issue a challenge. You, your ad read just inspired me. All right, give it to me. Use the Linode code. Use their I manage, I think it's Postgres thing. Yeah. I think they do a couple, but I think it's Postgres and MySQL for sure. Yeah, and they got Mongo too. Yeah, they got Mongo, Postgres, and MySQL. Build, you have to be in the US, blah, blah, blah. The same caveats I always put on it. I, for some reason, have a spare dev one. <laughs> Because I think I entered some alcoholic fugue state where I just started ordering dev ones. Yes. <laughs> See, this is why it needs to be a video show. Your face is <laughs> priceless right now. Like, it's amazing. I cannot, I almost did a spit take on the mixer. I legit That would have been amazing. I, watching your reactions to the nonsense, it's amazing. It's, you're just like, the sad part is Chris knows that this is 100% definitely true. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. So... Um, tell you what, the winner who could make me the best web application, not just me, right? Like post it publicly, whatever, that tracks all the dev slash community events in the States, particularly focusing on the Northwest and the Southeast, right? Because that's where we are. A nice format where you can add it to your calendar, with links to sign up so that next time there's an event that makes sense for either uh, Chris or I to go to, we can just not screw it up and actually know about it. Unlike this yourself which is my fault. A uh, community, a Linux community event tracker. Yeah. I mean, it'd be cool if you could just like sign up for it, get like an email every time there's, you know, one added or something, but yeah. An account or a calendar ICS feed. You know, I know the Portland area has one specifically for Portland, but we need something for our water. Well, there's a bunch for like, even meetup.com does something like it. But first of all, their filters are, their filters are just awful. But I'm thinking someone who knows, you know, knows the show, knows the JB community. And this could be something useful for other hosts or other even just community members sign up for have better meetups. We could put our stuff on there. I'm surprised this doesn't exist. I haven't found it. If it, I mean, if it exists, then, you know, all bets are off. But I haven't found it. Yeah, no, I, I have not either. I like I say, I know of like the, the one in Portland, which I think is actually open source. Oh, yeah, it has to be open source, right? Like that's the caveat. Open source on GitHub, GPL it if you want. Oh, yeah. Caligator is what they call it. Caligator. That's terrible. Yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> you could fork that. Yeah, it's Portland's tech calendar, caligator.org. And it is a collection of all of the events. Like, here's some data engineering Q&A night, uh, software engineering beyond boot camp, mentorship Saturdays, just different events, including they'll have their Linux community events on there and whatnot. So someone could look at that. I'll put a link in the show notes. Maybe somebody could get started there, you know? I, I will say the uh, young man, I didn't, I didn't feature him because he was uh, underage and I, I just, you know, but who made me, or maybe he was 17, 18, I don't remember, who made me the Snow Leopard GTK theme did in fact get his gazelle. I'm just saying, I always pay, I always pay my bets. So <laughs> that's great. Oh, uh, all right. Okay. So you've updated your Linux toolbox for 2020 and uh, you've got some, you know, you've been playing around some new hardware. Certain software has been discontinued. Some software, I think, has become more prominent. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah. So, um, you know, for, for you hardcore Linux heads, I think a lot of this is going to be like Ledoy. But kind of, I've been using the Mac a lot, and I still have not been able to move my, this is kind of sideways, but my, uh, like, audio production e stuff. I don't do a lot of it like Chris, but I do enough that it's annoying. Particularly, like, Photoshop workflow onto Linux, although I am learning the GIMP. Also, it seems that uh, old Adobe has plans to make a web version of Photoshop. There's also PhotoP, which I don't know if you've ever tried that. I don't know that one. PhotoP, like P-E-A. Oh, no. It is like Photoshop 7 in the web browser. It's not bad, actually. Oh, that actually would be almost yeah. perfect. It, and it opens and saves. I think it saves, but I know it opens PSD files, too. So there's something. Interesting. So that would be super good. Yeah, I don't do a ton of it. It's always like, you know what, when you're working with a designer on a product, they're all... It, you, 
they hate cutting assets and they always want to hand you just a Photoshop file. Right. And they're <laughs> yeah. just like, here you go. Yes. So. Yes. Totally. All right. So, you know, Rob, I'm just going to run through the list. Some of this is obvious. VS Code. Why? Because I'm a developer and I don't like to pay for things. And also Microsoft has thrown just a stupid amount of investment in VS Code. It's really good. We all know that. Everybody has their preferences. Move on. Meld. I really like Meld. I got some for putting Meld in here. I don't understand what's wrong with Meld. It's a it's a GUI diffing tool. It's comparable to uh, the popular Mac app Kaleidoscope, which is also a GUI giffing tool, except Meld is free. It's in almost every app store on Linux that I could think of that runs GNOME. I I don't know, man. It, it gifts my like merge conflicts or various versions of documents really quickly, really visually. You can customize it to a point. It's one of those tools that I use a lot and just works. It sounds super boring. I like it better than the VS Code diff tool, mostly because I, I like having it side by side with the colorized, uh, like colors, the different versions, right? Like, you know, blue is whatever colors you pick, but like mine is blue and red. So I could see like, okay, we have this three-way merge, you know, where the hell did we go wrong? The next one is color picker, which is again, super simple, but this, my post is really targeting people coming from the Mac. Mac has the, what is it, digital color, color meter? Is that right? Is that what they call it? I mean, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, this is a better version of that, believe it or not. This is a case where the Linux alternative is, in fact, like more full-featured, easier to use, and makes a lot more sense for what you're doing. So it's great. You can put a droplet or a, a pipette or whatever they call that anywhere on your screen, and it will get you the color of that item in various uh, formats. Super useful if you're doing something for a client and, you know, they just got to have their shade of blue, right? But no one wants to give you a hex code or RGB code for it (laughs) because they don't know it. My next one up, I use this damn thing every day on every operating system, Postman. If you don't know what Postman is and you either write API calls or you use API calls, it's free. Go download it. It is an Electron app but it will make your life a hundred times easier than just having to like curl test your requests or, you know, have some giant document of like request samples. You can save them, you can group them, you can have collections for like, I have it by client mostly, when I have it by project, if it's for our internal stuff, really good. You can also do variable, uh, like variable values. So like if you're on one machine, the API key can be this, if you're on another machine, it can be that. Super cool stuff really useful there is a paid option which i do pay for getting some love in the uh in the chat room too oh yeah you got to check out the post man hammerless says it's one of the electron apps that doesn't feel like an electron app it does exactly what it says on the tin right it just works happy terminal all right so this is one where i decided to bitch at somebody i don't know why zach and company at warp terminal seem to be wanting to duck the when is it coming to linux question actually i have a suspicion can i fry some bacon yeah you want some all right, so Warp Terminal, we covered it a couple weeks ago or a month ago. You can look it up. We'll put it in the show notes. They keep making mouth noises about like a web-based version of it because they want this whole like remote teamwork and they have a lot of features for that. I have a feeling they're going to do the web before they do Linux. I just do. And that, to me, is a big mistake. And then Linux users can go run it in a web browser. But they're not going to, right? Or they'll do some like they package it, right? But whatever. So I've decided to go to a web-based terminal called Tappy. <laughs> uh-huh. I will say this is the one where I, I like it over G-Terminal. It has some better auto-completion, some more configurability. If you're on Mac and you haven't tried Warp, I know they have the weird thing where you have to log in with GitHub, but give it, unless you're like super worried about that, they don't track what you do in the terminal. You can turn all that stuff off. It is really good. I'm tabby for now but i would be going back to them if they could get on linux since other than this kind of production stuff i'm basically daily driving so yeah what did i miss i know i'm missing stuff you think so it's funny i can forget that i'm on the uh on the dev one sometimes because i'm really just living in like terminal windows tiled all over the place and you know vs code that's so nice it's so clean it's so portable that setup like you could run that on anything really yeah that's a that's a great place to be. I mean, you got all the obvious things like, of course, chat apps and and whatnot. Yeah, I didn't put like you know Lutris in there because I was kind of you know. But I, I will give the, the Linux machine over the Mac like 
most of my Steam library seems to work relatively well. Yeah. Oh, it's way better. It's way better. And it's pretty a neat. It's it's only a 16 gig machine too. I was surprised. Isn't it funny how we now live in a time where if you want a game and you want a good developer workstation, Linux makes a lot more sense than the Mac and the Mac is in such a bad gaming position right now. I'll toss in one bonus app. If uh, you, like me, end up with multiple browsers to either test things in different browsers or for different account reasons, there is an app that I've mentioned maybe once before on the show, maybe it's called Junction. And it's like Bumper on Mac OS. It lets you choose the browser a link opens in. So you click a link. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And this little pop-up overlay that lists your browsers, you know, just icons or whatever browser it auto detects on your system. You tap that browser and then that browser launches with the URL. That's super cool. Yeah, I, 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 I use this a, a surprising amount. I just, there's some things I use Chrome for, some things I use Firefox, some things Edge, even good on web. Like, So you mentioned Edge. I had Edge in here and I took it out because I was afraid that the whole thing would be overshadowed by <laughs> Edge hate. I am, I am living in Edge now. You know what? Stop it. Are you really? It is the easiest way for me to sync all my insanely long passwords. And I still have to Google Authenticate with the Authenticator app, everything. But it runs everywhere. I mean, if it works for you, you know, I have Edge in a couple of spots because for whatever reason, some of these apps we use for remote shows and stuff just use considerably less CPU and Edge than they do Chrome or Firefox. I don't know what they're doing. So I end up, I end up reluctantly using Edge quite a bit for that sort of stuff. I wonder how many like people are using Linux and Edge at the same time. But we all, you know, it's like, well, yeah, yeah, officer, I did have a, a drink or two, but uh, listen, my grandma died and uh, I was running Edge. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I see. It's been a rough day. I see. So you're obviously your your Discord chat was taunting you <laughs> and in your despair. I see. OK. <laughs> um, all right. Well, speaking of things we're reluctantly using, how has uh, Copilot gone for you so far? You, I know you signed up for the GitHub Copilot. You're now a paying user. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I gotta, I gotta stop doing stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, I mean, it's great for System76. Yeah. And, uh, and, and content, uh, content. And content, but we need to raise our ad rates, dude. <laughs> um, all right. So, Copilot, we're going to do this like a nice corporate performance review. Performance. Damn, yeah, things fast. I was surprised. Like it figures it out quick, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, well, <laughs> it's fast. It's it's fast like a drunk driver's fast. Like it's it's pretty quick, but it ain't going anywhere good. Um, that's a little mean. Languages. So this is all right. I'm just gonna do the bad stuff first. If you are writing relatively mainstream Python, Copilot is amazing. For Python, it's amazing. I'm struggling to understand what you just said because it sounded like what you just said is if you're writing Python, Copilot works really well, which is just. That's hard for me to wrap my head around. And then I started thinking, is that because maybe all of the open source software they fed this thing yep. was mostly yep. Python? I think that's what it is, right. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, when I say mainstream Python, I'm talking about like basic, you know, I'm parsing data, blah, 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 rendering a web page, doing some Jinja stuff. That all works pretty good. Some of the suggestions are definitely questionable, but, you know, if you are a junior dev and need a little handholding, and you're writing, let's just say, a Django app, I think it'd be, it would be helpful, or at least not harmful. It has some interesting ideas on HTML and CSS. Um, now, that's not my strongest suit, so I don't know if it's, I have a very old school way of doing things in on the front end. I doubt that because I'm doing Angular TypeScript right now, which I know isn't the newest thing, but it's also not like you know, straight up jQuery, right? Get really convinced once you do something like once you take one of its suggestions, it gets real sure you want that like 20 other times. Ah, it gets an attaboy and it, it really responds. Yeah, which can become annoying. I have some concerns that weren't really my concerns, but then I got hammered enough on the DMs and on the on the uh, telegrams that I'm not sure that this isn't going to open up like potential just, you know, they used to say PHP was bad because like all the, you know, kids didn't know what they were doing. were just writing PHP and copy off Stack Overflow. Well, this is like without even having to hit control C, control V, right? This is pretty bad. Yeah. And it could be for everything. So if you're using fast API, it seems pretty confused. 
but that's because Fast API is a, a Python framework that Wes turned me on to a while ago, is much newer, much less popular, and frankly, not that supported, right? Because it's yeah, it probably wasn't in the data set as much, right? Where if you're using Django or Flask, it's like okay, I get you. Um, or honestly, straight like if you're writing a Python command line app, that's your that's your guy. He's there. He's there for you, like a good neighbor. Copilot's there, <laughs> like a drunk neighbor. Copilot's there. If he's grilling, he might give you food though. So ah, uh, that's true. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I'm st- I'm going to keep it up for the year though. I'm going to use it. I am going to keep using it for non-client internal stuff because I don't want to get sued. So that's your that's kind of that's the way to kind of walk that line is nothing you're going to ship to any any client. Yeah, the Telegram Freedom Beard scared me enough that I was like, all right. <laughs> Which I would say, if you're a Freedom Beard on Telegram, have you did you forget about IRC? But whatever. Like the, the argument they made that you'll get like sued and your client will get sued for the GPL, I I don't think so. That seems cray cray. But I guess it's possible. My concern would be like Copilot generates some crazy proprietary thing, or it more more likely my actual my actual concern was copilot basically generates a bunch of security holes right because it takes the most popular which might be the most naive and crappy way to do things so all right interesting well i'll be curious to circle back and uh, see how it's going yeah i'm well i'm gonna try it with some uh some either minecraft mod development or some light game development because i'm doing that project with my kid i talked about last week so that's uh i want to see how it does on something that's not like web dev but I definitely get the feeling that like this is one of those things, right? Where it's like when you're on Twitter and you hear, see the people tweeting about doing dev, you know half those dudes who are talking about hardcore hacking are like JavaScript developers. Tailscale.com slash coder. Go there to get a personal account for up to 20 devices for free. And of course, you're supporting the show. Tailscale is a game changer. It's a zero config VPN. It installs on any device in minutes, manages your firewall rules, navigates your dub nats, and it'll work from anywhere. And of course, devices connect directly in a mesh network using WireGuard's noise protocol. You build up, then you have static IPs for all your machines. It's so handy. Literally, last night, laying in bed, realizing I had screwed something up for the LUP show notes. Oh, I just I should just go to bed. But you know what? It was really important. And I was already home. And I knew thousands of people would be confused if I didn't go make this correction. So I pop on my laptop. By the time my Wi-Fi is connected, my tail scale connection's up. And I'm SSH'd into a server, and I'm fixing things. Within minutes. It's such a peace of mind. It really was the missing piece for how I run my networks. And I've also been able to turn off all the inbound ports on my firewalls now. So my firewalls are like pristine, man. <laughs> it's Fort Knox up in here because of tail scale. It's so great. I got in everything from my arch boxes, my Nix boxes, my pies, my iPad. I mean, you name it, man. I got tail scale on it. Every device is connected to a mesh network with static VPNs. It's so great. They're always on. So they're always available. And they're smart about how they route the traffic. Go try it yourself for free for up to 20 devices and support the show. It's tailscale.com slash coder okay so we thought to stay in theme with the fact that it is independence day today we should probably talk about why you and i originally went independent independent agents so many years ago and i thought maybe we should try to capture this before i completely forget it because once i suggested this idea i really started struggling remembering of the history of everything because it's i've gotten so far from it that i really can't remember life before this way now. So I'm probably properly broken forever working in a company, I would imagine. Yeah, I would think so. Let's start with you. So what uh, what was it? Was there, did, uh, did you start on a career trajectory like I did? Like I went into the traditional nine to five world first and then did a course correction. Was that the case for you? Or did you always just go like, I'm not doing that. I'm doing my own thing. It was kind of the opposite for me, right? Because when I was in school, I did a lot of Java applet work, but that was effectively what we would call now freelancing. Yeah. But it was, they just called it, you know, contract part-time, whatever. Basically, they don't pay payroll tax because they're bricks. Then the iPhone came and I did a lot of web and iOS stuff for a long time. I got like, when we talked about this a long time ago, but I was on a contract that was like a job. But then I was supposed to convert over. I think I may have actually converted over for like a month. 
And then the, it was a startup. They had some severe financial issues and that did not last. So I was in this position where I literally left the place, went downstairs because it's New York. So there's like a bar in the basement and went to the pub and it was just like, okay, well, nothing has literally changed. I just lost a client. You know, we got to remember this is the, this is like the big, this is right before the app store gold rush. And then the app store gold rush happened and I never looked back really. Every once in a while, I'll be like, ah, I'm getting older. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm doing very different things than I used to do now. But yeah, I I've, I don't see myself looking back. I definitely think if you're going to do it super young, like I, I think your way is probably the more traditional, safer way. If you're going to do it the way I did, you want to be on the new hotness because otherwise you're going to get trounced by the contractors and freelancers who actually have, you know, experience. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I had a real interesting, looking back at it, path because I got, initially, my very first job was actually at a school district, which is surprisingly bureaucratic and complicated in in how pay works. And I was part of a union and all of that. And then I left and I went into a private bank, which was its own kind of bureaucrat sort of run organization and had, you know. 700, 800 ish employees. And maybe, maybe by the time I left a thousand, I don't know. And then I went and did small startup companies. I worked for a company called Dream Dinners, which was one of the very first meal order services. Oh, neat. Only because it was so early, you'd go to the website, which was all, of course, a PHP app, which I ran the back end for. You'd put your order in, but then you would go to one of the franchise locations and assemble the meals yourself. And then like, cart them home <laughs> like you, they didn't deliver them they hadn't figured like the two side oh you would go wait you the customer yeah you would go you would go that's, and, that's that's awesome yeah so of course we had a bunch of franchise locations and then they brought in some quote-unquote experts from starbucks and an expert from boeing and the company went into the toilet immediately wait 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 wait, wait. Where is the convert on the Venn diagram uh-huh. of Starbucks executives and Boeing executives? I guess they both like to fuel things locally. They looked at as two icons of industry, uh, right? Of course, Seattle, right, right. And the and the the two gals, the two co-owners that ran Dream Dinners, really idolized this other gal that worked at Starbucks. Of course, Starbucks had fired her, uh, but <laughs> so they picked her up. And then, of course, Boeing laid this guy off. And they picked him up and they just really just ran things differently and the whole thing fell apart. And it was about at that point where I had kind of walked the whole spectrum. And of course, I'm shorting. There's a lot of little other jobs in there. Of course, yeah, yeah. Where I realized I can hate working for somebody else. It drives me crazy. I can't stand their pandetic, pandetic priorities. I can't, I can't understand most of their motivations. I, I, I lose motivation working for them. I, I, I typically, I typically just, it doesn't work out long term. And I, I was looking at that math and thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, I could just take a handful of clients and I could just do this. I, I mean, really, it's not it's not that big of a deal, which, of course, little did I know. Yeah. Doing independent IT contracting with a handful of selected clients, which was great money, transformed into podcasting as I kept trying to refine the podcast and I kept trying to figure like, what could we do to make them sound better? What, what could I do to make the content better? What, what do I have to do in order to make the show good enough to, for somebody to want to spend their time listening? And everything kept coming to, well, I need to spend more time on the podcast and less time consulting. And so it just sort of consumed everything. And I just sort of worked over time to make it possible to do this full time. And then about a decade into it, we decided, okay, Let's try combining with a larger organization that has a similar goal set as ours, but has a much bigger budget. You know, like for me too, man, I was so burned out because I just didn't have anybody doing marketing. I didn't have anybody doing this or that, right? There's when you join a large organization, all of a sudden you get all these resources and I got health insurance right before I ended up in the hospital. So that was nice. And I learned at that point what it's like to be in a VC backed business, a couple of them, because then they were acquired by a cloud guru. But I also learned a very valuable lesson that the kind of dedication that these podcasts require can't happen in an, in an organization where the podcasts are not ultimately the end product. So if the end product is anything but the podcast, there's just no way the organization will be as focused and prioritized to serve the podcast as they need to be. That makes sense. And in order to make them competitive, they need that kind of dedication and focus. 
And so that's when I realized it wasn't going to work as part of a larger organization, right? That's when we, you know, begun the process of making JB independent again. And now it's kind of like I'm in a middle ground where like I kind of miss some of that stuff. I was kvetching before the, before the show started that for the last two days, we've had tech issues. After like years of great stability, we've started having some tech issues as the machines are getting older. And, you know, I'm the guy that's like in here to do something else. And all of a sudden I realized the computer's broken. And now I'm, I've like gone back 15 years in time and now I'm doing tech support <laughs> for myself and that kind of stuff. You know, it'd be, it's, it's, you know, in the past we had like a full team of people. So there'd be somebody in here that could do that. And, you know, it's all right. It's not the same. But ultimately, I think the shows are better for it. So the product's better for it. And our core team is, you know, you know, you know, the people that are around now, they're, they're great. They're like, they're the best. It's the best team we've ever had. So that all worked out. And I'm kind of figuring out a health insurance thing. And I'm in the, I'm in process of it right now, which could be great. That'd be a nice relief because I haven't really had anything before. So I'm getting close to having that all sorted out. And it's been a long journey, but I think ultimately it was about figuring out what works for me and what, how I can work best and also understanding that, and maybe it's in part because I have, um, I've been diagnosed with ADD, but like I have to be working on something that matters to me. And if I'm working on something that matters to me, I can just work endlessly on it. And if I'm working on something that doesn't matter to me, not only do I have to like really stay on myself to like keep going and keep getting the job done, but I screw stuff up. I just don't pay attention to the details. I, I miss things, not intentionally, but because I'm just not laser focused on it. But when I'm laser focused on it, I become hyper aware of attention. I have a hyper attention to detail. So it's just a big flip in realizing how I work too. And then trying to build something around that. Who knows? The next couple of years are probably going to be pretty wild. Something else is probably going to change. Yeah. What's funny is uh, when I first started going indie, my goal was to be a game dev company. Oh, I still, every once in a while, try to do it, but my crusty old Cocos 2D Objective-C code it just doesn't cut it today. Things have changed so much, but maybe one day. One day. Time to get skilled up in metal. Metal. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, right. Yeah, you know what's funny, too, is I can sense that there is another shift coming, and in part because I think there's so many macroeconomic shifts happening, and I think budgets are going to get reallocated, and I think everything's going to go through a repricing. Everything. Yeah. Everything. And so I, I feel like that inevitably is going to have some sort of knock on effect to what I do, but it just is too early to tell. So it's sort of just like you just go into it knowing that there's kind of a storm down the road and you just kind of hope you're going to drive through it. I, I suppose. Yeah, this is this is going to be a hell of a year, a year or two year period, I think. Yeah. Or more. Yeah. Mm. So uh, it's tough to say, but, you know, I guess part of it is you learn to shift. You learn to kind of uh, tuck and roll, I suppose, because look at you, right? Started, you want to do game development, ended up writing the app store away for a while. And now you're really, you're, you're probably writing more backend applications and, you know. Well, yeah, mostly backend. I would say, yeah, definitely mostly backend, but like business, business, line of business applications, almost all backend, you're right. Yeah. yeah, isn't that funny? And it's it's each time it's a tuck and roll, right? And sometimes it's just stuff out of your control. It's jumping out of a moving car. Yeah, yep. right. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. System76.com slash specials. Yep, our friends at System76 are back. They have a 4th of July sale. Each user is going to receive a toolkit, which includes the iFixit. I think it's the Minow. You know, it's like their DIY repair kit. You're also going to get a right to repair declaration scroll. <laughs> that sounds fun. And a sticker. This is just going to come with any purchase of a computer until their supplies run out. The Tinker's Toolkit until it's gone. And now's a great time to get a new machine because, of course, they've got great prices right now. and Brand new lemur, or I'm sorry, the lemur, with a 12th gen Intel CPU. That's what's up. We've been waiting for that. 14 hours of battery life, clocking at only 2.5 pounds with four terabytes of NVMe storage. Wow. Then also the new Darter. You know, the Darter was recently released. Also has a 12th gen Intel. You can get an i7 or an i5 in there. Nine hours of battery life, 3.8 pounds. 64 gigabytes of RAM. Woo! <laughs> Go check out System76. I will give a personal shout out to the launch. Absolutely love it. Got it right here. <laughs> I got the launch right in front of me as I record. It is the best keyboard I've ever used. So many great systems over at System76. And they're born to run Linux. And they're better than ever. 
So go take advantage of their 4th of July sale, get yourself that free Tinker's Toolkit while supplies last, and you support the show. So to get the special, to get that toolkit, the sticker, and the scroll, go to system76.com slash specials, and when you're checking out, tell them the coder program sent you. Say hi from Mike and Chris, would you? Say hi to our friends over there. system76.com slash specials. Ask not what your podcast can boost for you. But what you can boost for your podcast. All right. So Logic came in with 500 sats four days ago. Uh, he says, let's get some resources posted over on Matrix. Need to get more people in Matrix. I owe Mike a, uh, an account, although I have accounts disabled. So I have to figure out if I have to turn accounts on and then create you an account or if I can create them, but have them disabled for the public. And of course, there's no like UI to manage any of this. I mean, there's some projects out there, but no, it runs on Linux. What's UI? But the, uh, the Matrix Room is beginning to organize. I think they're going to come looking for you soon. So just FYI on that. Ooh, sounds fun. You better watch out. Oh, a guy, one, boosted in 120 sats. Look, I'm giving you the last sats I earned from promoted clips and shows on Fountain. This is a new thing they're doing now where they're giving away sats to help people boost when you listen to promoted clips. It actually says he likes it a lot. It feels like marbles when I was a kid. <laughs> That's pretty great. That's pretty great. Keep up the incredible work. Uh, maybe I will get enough stats to send a tribute to my much loved 6502 processor, the classic, the classic. He says he might become a member too. Uh, user and boosted in 225 stats four days ago. Regarding Vim, guys, it's still a solid choice today, especially with Neo Vim. No surprise, it's listed as one of the most loved IDEs in the Stack Flow, in the Stack Overflow Developer Survey. Speaking of, have you thought about reviewing that survey? This year we didn't do it. We didn't do it. We've done it. We've done it almost every other year. You know, that survey kind of. I'm, I'm getting done with it. I'm getting done with it because it's always like JavaScript. It's like always number one. Yeah. Unless he means the IDEs and they're always kind of the same too, right? And what's it going to be? People who are lying and saying they're using like Emacs and Vim who are really mostly using VS Code. You know, people actually using Emacs and Vim and a bunch of folks using JetBrains and Visual Studio, right? So I don't know. It's, it's. Uh, I don't know. Did we ever actually talk about it? But the reason I, I didn't even like put it in the show notes, maybe we did talk about it, was it? it's just kind of the same for the last several years, right? The, the last shakeup was really the App Store stuff when Objective-C shot up the thing and then Swift came and there was a bit of a jumble. Yeah, otherwise it's kind of just been more of the same. Linux is doing great. That's all I care about. Yeah, Linux yeah. is fine. It's gaining share. Yeah. Yep. Dave Jones boosted him four days ago with 2,112 sats. B-O-O-S-T. He says, yeah, he's all on board with the robe coin. He could call it RBC. You know, we could get a, you know, a crap coin out there that we pump and dump with robes. And then uh, if you have like a thousand of them, then you could turn them in for a robe or something like that. We'll have to figure it out. We'll have to, because definitely. I love it. There's, there's, there's a real like tokenomics to a good scam. We'll, we'll definitely have to figure it out. Don't, don't want to miss out on that. Pleb 3000 boosted in 225 sats. Chris, you had a good opportunity to tell Mike some of the privacy technologies like CoinJoin and Lightning. The transactions are visible, but it's difficult to trace the addresses to their owners if they're regularly doing coin joins and spreading them with Lightning. Also, with 50% of Bitcoin and Lightning nodes behind Tor and in different countries, it's going to be difficult for anyone to stop the Bitcoin network. You see, you say something bad about the Bitcoin and somebody's going to come at you. I didn't, you know, I, you know, Pleb, I don't really tend to argue on this stuff because I feel like history will, will tell us what happens. Time will tell. Well, it, it, you know, a bit, the coins, I want to be careful here, the coins are still looking for their killer app, right? I'd even say blockchain, you know, I think blockchain is going to be a thing that lots of banks and financial institutions use, but I'm not sure that we're going to see like the, I keep going back to it, but like the indie, rena, you know, the indie opportunities there because... I, I think blockchain, it's slow, it's resource intensive, and it has certain attack vectors if it's not of a certain size uh, of a network. And I don't think there's a lot of compelling use cases for blockchain outside of Bitcoin. I think it's pretty much the one. And the only real value and use case I see there long term is a hard money that is all accountable. You know, where all 21 million of them are and they are all unique and scarce. And it's a store of value because of that. People love that scarcity thing. Outside of that, like the NFT marketplace is completely crashed, right? Uh, all this stuff just seems like it's totally in the tank. And I think we're really seeing a dot com kind of clean out. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. You'll see some projects survive. But I think for the most part, 
a lot of that stuff's going to get washed away. Now, this is, I mean, it's going to be a couple of years. We're, we're going to go through the cycle again, right? I mean, you could even see the VCs are pulling back. And I read something just wonderful in the New York Times this morning. Apparently, Uber didn't realize they weren't making money because <laughs> they're in a panic, it seems, over, uh, according to this op-ed, because, oh, shit, we make no money and there's not like drunk VC money anymore. Yeah. So what are we going to do? And the answer is, this is like my revenge from 2012, right? Like the point of a business is to like that number in Excel needs to be black, not red. They're going to have to clean house. Yeah, we're going to see like the fall of the stupid business models. Now, Uber is a bad example. Uber's not going to fall, right? They have too much money, too much momentum. But I think it's healthy, to be honest with you. I think it's a healthy purge. It probably is. It probably is. And I think my prediction, since I love to make them in this show, apparently, is that in a couple of years after some regulation has settled, it'll go, it'll shake out like this. You're going to have Bitcoin and maybe a couple of other cryptos. And those will be called digital assets. And then all the junk is going to be crypto. And that's going to be the stuff that's just sort of like in this early stage that isn't properly regulated and uh, isn't ever going to be of any serious value. And the stuff that we take serious, the culture will just shift to calling them digital assets. They're digital assets. You could see like MTG Arena like going to a crypto model, right? And then allowing like easier car trading and stuff like that. But I love it. I mean, it makes a lot of sense to me, but yeah. Although the problem is they could solve all that problem without going to crypto. Sorry, but yeah. yeah that's just it, right? There's, there's going to, I think that there's going to have to be a process of, I guess, people trying it and failing and then realizing, oh, we could just use a database and what, you know. <laughs> what, what, what the, the problem is, in what case is the SQL query more resource intensive and slower than putting this on the blockchain if I'm like literally doing card trading or something like that? And the answer is almost done. Or I can't think of one. So, All right. The Golden Dragon boosted in two days ago with a row of ducks, 2,222 sats. I'm a duck. D-U-K, duck. Loaded with talent. Because I'm wary of anything that can use licensing against its users like Copilot. It seems super bad that an AI can just grift code from users to sell. Time to move to another Git instance, perhaps? No. No. I mean, okay. So th this is one. One of my great pains in life is that I'm not using GitHub because I have to do a bunch of manual crap that I wouldn't have to if I was just fully in on GitHub. I keep trying it. I keep coming back. But I think during this, what I consider, I think we, are we calling it a, like a winter for tech? Did we give it a name? Or? Boy, it sure feels like it is. It's going to, yeah, tech winter. I'm looking to cut cost, and I know they're not a sponsor anymore, but Dio, you got to lower those drop of prices. are killing me, <laughs> especially the backups. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Th this whole co-pilot thing, I was on Hacker News and they have this GitHub co-pilot search. It's both, a co-pilot's both impressive, but not nearly as impressive. It's like a Roomba, right? It, it, sure. It's like, that was super cool. But like, I don't know, man, I have cats and dogs and like the Roomba can't do the job by itself. It just can't. That's co-pilot. And, and actually I would say the Roomba's far more impressive and far more competent than co-pilot. So like this hand wringing, this pearl clutching... <laughs> It's just try using it first before you say it's the end of open source and it's going to dominate the world and Microsoft's going to balmer their way. It's just not going to happen. I mean, it, it's it's really like Clippy, dude. It's Clippy for Git. It's Clippy for code. That's what it is. As a man who keeps rewriting Clippy and calling it Alice over and over again, it's Clippy. <laughs> All right, the Golden Dragon double boosted in with a nice message for you. Another row of ducks. Thank you very much. And here's something for your trouble. Double boost because you both are super awesome, and this is becoming a favorite weekly podcast amongst the few I listen to. Thanks, Golden Dragon. Becoming. Well, you know, he actually emailed in, too, because uh, he you told him last week to DM you for some Python I books. I did. I did. I did. Yes. But then he doesn't use Twitter. You know, they're, they're out there. He did email. I got him. We got hooked up. I got to respond to him again, actually. Look at you guys. Look at you guys. Lima 3 boosted in with uh, 4,720 sats three days ago. Just why has it taken me so long to start listening to this podcast? I listen to a number of other JB shows, which I love. I'm a sysadmin by trade, but a coder by education. Maybe you could throw a short segment into office hours to do a quick run through of all the JB shows to help spread the word. And so you don't have to guess, oh, for the numbers, 4,720 
is because four th- 472 was my first episode. Ah, oh, based on the episode number. Keep it up. Oh, that's clever. You know, we've been doing the show for a while, and so I think as a result, it just doesn't come up much on the other shows. But we should try to mention it more. I'm, I really walk that line of try not to do too many self-plugs, but also making sure people know it's out there. I mean, I mean, like once a year, you have me come on one of the Linux shows and I just troll people. Although now I can't. I'm one of you goddamn hippies <laughs> now. Uh, K-Pok. K-Pok. P-Pok. <laughs> Boosted in. For wait, her. is this dude? Wait. Can I help? K-Pok. K- if you need help. K-Pok. With the right, if you need help with the right of ascension against your evil Klingon brothers, I am here for you. It does. I will shave my head Picard style. It totally does sound like a Klingon name. That's it so is, great. It does. Yeah. So 473 sats three days ago, he said, this is a future episode number club. Boost. I'm donating sats to the next episode number. Thanks for the weekly dose of code and related entertainment. Keep up the good work, boys. Well, thank you. Uh, that's a great That's a great idea. We also, we got a big old, uh, like across a couple of boosts. Thank you, boost from Wine Deer. 20,100 sats. Damn, dude. Yeah, you know what he gets? I think he deserves the baller boost for that. He's the baller of this episode. Because I'm a bad- He's our back home baller. He's our baller in these parts. It's, a, it's an SNL reference. We also got a thousand sats from LT Guy Five. Thanks, everybody. Oh, I remember that. That's Tina Fey. Yeah, it was a. It's a good. The, the the girl the girls are back from college, right? And they're like, yeah, okay. and their moms are spoiling them and stuff. Spoiling the shit out of them. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. it's a great skit. It's actually a pretty good video. It's surprisingly good. So there you go. Uh, thank you, everybody, for boosting in. If you'd like to send us a boost, you can get a new podcast app at newpodcastapps.com. I've been using Fountain FM, and you do earn some sats in there with some of those supported clips. So I'll have a link in the show notes if you want to uh, try that out. And um, there's also Boost CLI and Breeze, both of which don't require switching podcast apps. Boost CLI is obviously a command line client. And Breeze is uh, a separate app that you get at breez.technology. And, you know, we should think soon about uh, maybe later this week recording a special for our members because our Coder QA crew is out there and it is time for their Coderly report. It is. It is time. We should do it this week. Yeah, yep. maybe Thursday or Friday. I'll chat with you after we we wrap up here. But that's a great way to support the show. And you get an ad-free version of the show. You get the Coderly report, a little extra bonus show. And uh, soon you'll have a second feed option for the live stream. CoderQA.co. Oh, no. I know. Watch out, right? Mr. Dominic, is there anywhere you want to send the people? Uh, you know what? Go to DominicM.com. I, I might actually manage another blog post this week because I've been putting torturing. I mean, I would say testing, but uh, I've been told that uh, apparently they didn't expect me to have a prohibition style party. Inappropriate? Juggling at <laughs> HP Dev ones. <laughs> And now I see that uh, Carl has new laptops for me to use as coasters. So I'm yeah, I'm just very busy. Yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I, I've also requested a purple themed Thalio that doesn't seem to be in the offing. So, you know, there is a very, very special edition Thalio. I've heard. I've seen it. Yeah. There, I wonder if they'll ever sell it because, you know, I need a new OBS machine and uh, wouldn't that be cool? Let me spend <laughs> thousands of dollars. <laughs> It's, no way, right? No way. Well, that's why this I'm that's why this iMac Pro is still hitting here, sitting here. It's literally for OBS because I, I keep toying with doing that video thing we talk talk about every few months. And one, I can't sell this damn computer for some reason. Like, no one wants to buy an iMac. Pro Ew, it has an Intel. Gross. Uh, but it's also like kind of the ideal production machine for the level of like you know just Twitch production I would be doing. So, yeah. Yeah, it's good enough. It really is. It's fine. But then it's Mac, and I'd really like to do it on Linux. But then I'm like, but do I want to spend tons of money on another Thaleo or something? And the answer is no. This is no. where I'm at right now. This is where I'm at. I got to figure all this out. Because my uh, the OBS machine, now that we're doing video streaming to JupyterTube, it's barely hanging on. It's barely, yeah, sure. It's barely yeah. hanging on. So, it, you know, we on. built it to do audio streaming. Right. So, yep. Well, once you add video, everything just and, and I want to do video of like my. I, so I want to go like full like I, I'm learning from the 14 year old that like apparently they have to see your face in a little square on the bottom of the screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you have to screen cap and you have to make sure you turn off notifications. Oh, yeah. Because that iMessage can get in a lot of trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we know. We oh, know. we do. All right. How is Leo Laporte these days? You know, oh, I think they're mind. doing great over there. I think they're doing just fine. 
I love Leo, actually. All right. You can follow the show at Coda Radio Show. Uh, like you could watch the video playback, jupiter.tube, if you want to do that. And links to what we talked about today, thems are over at coder.show slash 473. You'll find our contact form over there. Send us in some emails. If I've missed your email, you probably need to send it in again. Um, there's that. But we'd also love to have a good full mailbag. A real thick mailbag next week. So go over to coder.show slash contact or send in a boost with a new podcast app. Those are also a great part of the show. And uh, that's it. Oh, I guess I'll live. We do the show live on Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. So you can come over and join us at jblive.tv. We also stream it over at jupiter.tube. And then we got the chat room going up there on the screens and you can interact with us in real time and give us feedback right then there in the chat room. I suppose that's probably like, that's peak connectivity. Radio should have figured that one out. So, Monday, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern for that if you'd like. Or just get the RSS feed and you get it Wednesdays when Drew's all done, making it nice and purdy. Making it sound just a little bit better than we normally do. And by a little, I mean a lot. All right, everybody, thanks so much for tuning this week's episode of the Coder Radio program. And we'll see you right back here next week. <laughs> 